Hi there. Welcome. This is Becky Berg, and this is the second session for the addition and subtraction strategies relating to number bonds. Our focus today is going to be using number bonds to build that relational understanding. So connections to core. Throughout core, you're going to see that we want our students doing addition and subtraction using strategies that are based on place value properties and that relational understanding. So once again today, this is really where we're going to focus our time. If we take a look at the connections to the core content standards, once again, this will be valuable when kindergartners are decomposing numbers less than or equal to 10, using objects, drawings, and recording those drawings and or equations. First grade, this will be a valuable tool for all of the operation and algebraic thinking standards. I didn't want to list them all. So as they're adding and subtracting within 10, thinking about the inverse operation, um, it's really going to be powerful. You can see here I listed 10A8 where they're determining that unknown whole number um, in an addition or subtraction equation. Um, it could be a really powerful tool. And in second grade, really helps build that addition and subtraction within 100 um, equations with a symbol for the unknown number. I think these bonds really lend themselves to moving students eventually into fluency. So once they understand that relationship, it leads into that fluency of memorizing our facts. So let's take a look. What exactly are number bonds? Here you can see an example of an empty number bond and then a number bond that has been completed. So, number bonds help students see that numbers can be broken into pieces to make computation easier. With number bonds, students recognize that relationship between the numbers through this visual model known as a simple bond. So, number bonds really help students understand the part-whole relationships. It's a tool to compose and decompose numbers. Really helps them develop that algebraic thinking, and you saw that connection earlier to some of our standards and it's going to lead them into a branching strategy that can be used with kids all the way up as they start to add fractions, for example. So here you're going to see, um, in, in what we do in our math instruction, we really think about that concrete pictorial abstract piece of learning because that can really lead to that deep understanding. So here what you'll notice is it's very concrete. You can give students a number bond mat, and you'll have access to those um, in the resources. And you'll see that they can use cubes, for example, and they will literally put cubes to represent the number bond. So eight can be broken up into two parts of five and three. Here's another concrete model, along with the numerical numbers, four and one equals five, okay? So it's always good with our, our students to start with that concrete representation, be it interlocking cubes or a 10 frame with counters um, or a number bracelet, for example. We'll start with that concrete. Then we have students draw the model with squares, for example, instead of the cubes. So they're representing that concrete with drawings. And then here you'll see a more abstract representation in which students included a whole of eight and the parts that they broke that whole into were five and three and then they wrote the equations okay and so it's important to note that while students are working with number bonds they can represent these bonds in different levels be it concrete pictorial abstract and here's an example of concrete representations and number bonds where the students use the cubes and created different bonds for 10. So here you can see that concrete pictorial abstract and it can be a really easy way to differentiate. Some of your students might be still working at a very concrete pictorial level and they're not yet ready to add the equations to that representation but in time the more they build it and see it and draw it they'll get that connection to that more abstract equation. Okay. All right, so here you will see some empty number bonds, and I have some cubes over here. So students, the idea of using number bonds is to focus on the relationship between the part and the holes. So as we're working with these, um, we can ask students how many counters do you have, and they can count those, and they will see that they have a total of seven. 
So what's the whole amount you have? And they would put that whole amount in the single circle over here. And then the question would be, what parts could we divide this seven up into? And you can refer to those as number pairs or um, just two parts of the whole. So here I have a part of three and a part of four. Okay, so as you're working with kids, you're really going to be asking them, you know, do you still have a whole amount of seven? Okay, and how have you divided that? What are the parts? So they could go ahead and how else might we decompose or break apart the number seven? Okay, so I think for most of us we've done breaking apart numbers, decomposing numbers, um, using different manipulatives. So. Remember a number bracelet? You could do the same thing with that. What's the whole amount? 10. And how can we break that 10 or decompose it into two groups or two parts? So here you can see we have 6 and 4. And then they would use their number band. And, you know, how else could you break 10 apart? And perhaps they do 8 and 2 and so forth. Um, and so they start to see that 10 can be decomposed in a variety of ways. When we're working with these, we really question about, do you still have a whole amount of 10? Is 8 and 2 the same as 10? Is 8 and 2 equal to 10? And of course, writing those equations that go along with our number bonds is that next step, isn't it? So we go from concrete to pictorial representations to that more abstract equation and so that they can make that connection between the parts and the whole, okay? All right, so let's take a look. Here we have a story about 12 frogs, some are brown and some are green, and we're asking kids to create three number bonds. So as you're facilitating this discussion, if, if you're just introducing this idea, you're going to be asking, what do we know in this problem? What information do we know? and provide a number bond, since that's what we're working on today, that relates to this problem. So do we know the whole amount? Are we missing parts? What, what can you tell me? And so students will hopefully lead you to the fact that there are 12 frogs total, whole amount, and we need to show three number bonds that represent that 12 whole amount. How are the different ways that we could represent that? So we would then have students determine different combinations of 12, and they could complete their chart, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this problem, and we're going to use a number bond to set this up. Here you can see 24 students are eating lunch, five had hot lunch, how many had cold lunch? The first step I like to have students do is when they're persevering in problem solving to first really think about what that question's asking. In the past, I've had them write down what the question is, but what I've found is to have them write that answer statement that shows what, how they're going to answer the question is much more powerful. So in this case, we would write an answer statement of blank, had cold lunch. So they're basically setting up that statement to answer the question. Okay, So that oftentimes kids will solve a problem and then they'll think about what the question was actually asking them. So in this case, we would set up a number bond, since that's the tool we're focusing on today and really asking students, you know, what do you see in that problem? Do you see any holes being represented, any parts? And in this particular case, um, we would get to the point where we know that there's 24. It's the whole amount. And we know one of the parts, but the other part is missing information. So we want kids to be able to recognize that, and then they can set that equation up however they prefer. Many kids will think of it as 5 plus something, equals 24, and other kids will think about it as 24 minus 5 equals something, all right? So as they solve this equation, um, they will then create, put that answer in their answer statement. Okay, so once again, they're thinking about the unknown and where that fits in that equation, okay? So it's really helpful that students are not just thinking, oh, this is subtract. Well, 
it can be looked at as a, a missing addend, a missing part. And that's really the power of number bonds. These are simple numbers we've been working with today, but note that this can be really powerful even as you start thinking about fractions, adding fractions, subtracting fractions, um, and so forth. So next time we come together, we're actually going to spend a little bit more time in number bonds um, and then move into branching. All right, thanks so much for your time, and we'll see you next time.